Today we're going to be talking about how to use disk and washer method to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by these curves about the y-axis. And in this particular problem we have the curves x equals 2 times square root of y, x equals 0, and y equals 9. These three curves together contain or bound a particular region and we're going to take that region and we're going to rotate it around the y-axis that's going to create a volume, a solid figure, and we need to find the volume of that solid. So with disk and washer method problems, the first thing I like to do is look at this chart that I've created. These problems can be confusing, which is why I made a chart. It's easier for me. Hopefully it'll be easier for you. But the place you always want to start, and by the way, this chart is on my website on my disk and washer page. But where you want to start with these problems is with your axis of rotation. So in our case, we're rotating around the y-axis. So that puts us in the second column here because you can see rotation about the y-axis. So whenever you're rotating around a vertical line, whether it's the y-axis or some line defined as x equals and a constant, like x equals 1 or x equals 10, whatever the line is, when you're rotating around a vertical axis of rotation, you're going to be looking at everything in the second column to help you complete this problem. If you're rotating around a horizontal axis, whether that's the x-axis or a line y equals some constant, you're looking at all of the information in the first column. We're in the second column, which means that we need our functions in the form x equals gy. And in our case, we already have that. It doesn't matter if you have lines in the form x equals a constant or y equals a constant. So x equals 0 and y equals 9 are just lines. We don't need to put those in a specific form, either y equals something or x equals something. We can leave them alone. But anything else, anything more complicated, because we're in the second column, we need it defined as x equals and then something in terms of y, and we've got that, so we're good. The next thing the chart tells us is how to find our radius. We need to know whether we're dealing with a disk or a washer to approximate volume, but once we know whether we have a disk or a washer, how to find the radius. The easiest way to find whether or not we're dealing with a disk or a washer is to sketch the region and the volume of rotation and we'll be able to see from the sketch whether we're dealing with a disk or a washer. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. Our cylinder approximation, whether we have a disk or a washer, is going to look roughly like this. It's going to be roughly horizontal and, and these are rough sketches, but you know, roughly vertical if we have if we're in the first column, roughly horizontal if we're in the second column. And then our integral, which is really important, is going to be defined as v for volume is equal to the integral from c to d. And this means limits of integration defined as y values. And then the integral is of a of y, which is basically just pi r squared. And we'll be integrating with respect to y, which is why we have dy here. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and draw a sketch of our problem. If you're not sure exactly how to draw 2 equals square root of y, you can always solve this for y. So we could divide both sides by 2 and we get x over 2 equals root y. We could square both sides and we would get y equals 1 fourth x squared. So that might be an easier equation for you to draw. But essentially here we've got our xy coordinate system with 0 as the origin here, and y equals 1 fourth x squared, or x equals 2 square root of y, is just a parabola that starts at the origin like this and opens up roughly like this. So we have this region here. Okay, so we've got the parabola. Then we have x equals 0, the line x equals 0, which we know is the y-axis here, and then the line y equals 9. So we've got our line here, y equals 9. So this is going to be y equals 9. This is going to be x equals 2 root y. Okay, so we know that we have the region here bounded by these three curves. x equals 0, or the y-axis, y equals 9, this line here, and then our curve. So what we've been asked to do is rotate this region about the y-axis, so we're going to be rotating it around the y-axis like this, and we need to find the volume of that rotated figure. So we essentially just have a 3D parabola here, and our volume of rotation, you know, is going to give us a 3D figure that looks something roughly like this, this open parabola here. And obviously we can see from looking at it that 
we're going to be using discs to approximate the volume as opposed to washers. With washers, you have to have some kind of hollow area in the center and therefore an inner and outer radius. In our problem, we have one solid without any kind of hollow area in the middle. So we're gonna be dealing with discs. And so we wanna draw an approximating disc and that could look something roughly like this and you can draw it anywhere on the figure, but it would look roughly like this where we have a disc that approximates area. And the idea with disc and washer method is that you're going to use an infinite number of these discs to approximate this area. So if you took discs like this and you stacked them on top of each other and you took an infinitely large number so that the smallest disc, you know, was right down here and then you took another one right here and another one right here and you used an infinitely large number of them, you could approximate this volume. We're gonna use just one of them and an integral to approximate the volume. So we wanna start labeling parts of our diagram. The width here of the cylinder or the height of it is going to be delta y. In other words, the, the change in y, the width of each disc we'll call delta y. The radius of each disc will just be the distance here. So let's do this in a different color. The radius of the disc will be this distance here from the center of the disc to the outer edge of the disc. And this one, the radius, the length of the radius is going to be defined by two things. First of all, this point here, this point right here is defined by the curve x equals two square root of y. So whatever value of y we're talking about here, we would plug that in and we'd get the value there. That's defined by two square root of y. And then this point here, the other end of the radius, is defined by zero, the line x equals zero. So if for every one of these disks, we took whatever value we got in this and we subtracted zero, we would get this distance here, this radius. So our radius is going to be two square root of y minus zero, which of course is just two square root of y. And that makes sense because our chart here tells us that if we're dealing with a disc, then our radius is just g of y here, which we know is two square root of y. We have that in our original function. So we know our radius is two square root of y. And now we can just start plugging things into our integral for volume. So we'll get volume equals now we have our limits of integration here, C and D, and C and D are gonna be with respect to Y. So the lowest point of Y, the lowest value of Y for which our solid is defined is the bottom right here, which is at zero. The highest point for which our solid is defined is this point here, which we know is the line Y equals nine. So that's a value of nine for Y. So our limits of integration are zero and nine. Now our integral tells us that we're taking the integral of a of y, and a of y is simply pi r squared. So we have pi and r squared, r is the radius. We already know radius is two square root of y. So we'll say two square root of y squared, and then of course we have dy here. So that's all we have to do to plug into our formula, and now we're just gonna be evaluating this integral. So we'll get the integral from zero to nine of pi times four y, because when we square two square root of y, we just get four y. We'll bring the four and the pi out in front because they're just constant coefficients. So four pi times the integral from zero to nine of y dy. When we take the integral here, we'll get four pi times one half y squared. And we're gonna be evaluating that on the interval zero to nine. So we'll go ahead and plug in our upper limit of integration, nine. Nine squared gives us 81. So we'll get 81 over two. And then we'll subtract from that whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration. Well, when we plug in zero, we'll just get zero. So there's no need really to write that out. Volume is gonna be equal to, the two here will cancel and we'll be left with two out in front here. So we have two pi times 81. So volume will be 100. 62 pi and that's the volume of this solid which is generated by rotating this region outlined in green here defined by and bounded by these curves about the y-axis so i hope you found that video helpful if you did like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos